Good morning, YouTubers, tweeters, and social media. You're returning to Coles' car commentary uh, as part of Automotive Tales series. Uh, I'm the Yorkshire engineer at Yorkshire Sea Engine on Twitter if you wish to have a look. And today you find me in something totally different. see my hire car one-liners and a couple of my reviews on the various hire cars I get for work that's a good opportunity to see how they do over 400 miles uh, but today you find me in a courtesy car I've got from my local garage who looks after my car it is a Citroen C3 1.1 desire with 60 I say 60 brake horsepower now I'm going to look at this slightly differently from the other reviews I've done this is going to be a review looking at it from Bangonomics you know you're looking at maybe 500 pounds to pick one of these up now uh, this one's done 92,000 miles uh, and I just sort of wanted to give an opinion on how it stood up to 20 years of abuse near it this is a 2004 model so 18 years old uh, because people have to buy these cars family students people who just want to cheap run around oh those on a budget simply they need something uh, that they can rely on and get to work and back so my views on the car in terms of interior space, it's good. I'm not a fan of the design language on this car. I don't think it's aged particularly well. However, I have to say for a small car, it would seat five people if you needed it to. It sits me, a six foot three uh, driver, perfectly fine. I've got plenty of headspace uh, room. And it is even a reasonable amount of room behind me with my seat in my current position. Seats are comfortable. They're typical French and soft. I don't know how they last over distance, but yeah, they, they seem okay at the moment. Uh, boot space, it's a deep boot, it's a very deep boot well, you get plenty of bags of shopping in there. It's not particularly well designed if you want to put the seats down or get stuff over quite a high boot lip, but it works and the boot opening is quite big as well, so you know what, you could live with this in the town and get a reasonable amount of bits of peace in it. And actually this space behind me, because of the high roof line, is quite cavernous for a small car because you've got the extra height in the roof. So you probably could get a reasonable amount of equipment, kit, boxes, Ikea, whatever you want to get in, uh, and live with it. It will do, do the job quite happily. In terms of performance and driving, uh, 1.1 engine is certainly slow. Uh, I can't say I've seen anything major in terms of reliability line. It's a hangover from the Saxo engine lineup, is this 1.1. Uh, it seems fairly robust. You get the usual wear and tear if they're not looked after, but it does the job. Gearbox, you certainly have to stir the gearbox to find a gear in there, but they all engage and they all work uh, and there's no issues. This one's got a little bit of clutch judder, but from what I've been told, it's still on its original clutch and it's done nearly 100,000 miles. Uh, so I'll forgive it for that, uh, for a car that has done a lot of town work, a lot of gear changing, uh, etc. And you don't know with being a Kersey car how much abuse it's had. So it's, it's done reasonably well. Uh, parts are cheap and cheerful. This is dead easy to service, the guys say. Uh, parts are readily available, they're really cheap. Uh, even for wear and tear items, you have to do a wheel bearing or brake distance stuff. It's not going to break the bank uh, to get it done. However, I will carry on that. If I was looking for one of these, I would probably look for, pay a little bit more premium if you can afford it, a couple of hundred pound, and seek out either a 1.4. Uh, you tend to get higher spec anyway on that, uh, just to give you a bit more power, because it is a bit painful driving with 60 brake horsepower on country roads around here. Or one of the 1.4 HDIs, uh, I think they may have got to 1.6 later on, I'd have to check that. Uh, but the positive is they are 20, 30 pound tax, and they'll do 60, 70 gallon all day long. However, this 1.1 is doing about 50 to the gallon, 40, 50 to the gallon, uh, which is not bad for a day-to-day -day town car and cheap motoring. However, the tax is higher on this, I think it's about 200 pound uh, to go forward. Uh, what else is positive on this? There's a few rattles and squeaks for the age. Uh, unfortunately, you won't get around that, that's just cheap motoring. But on a positive, everything works. I have been around the car and I've checked everything. The air conditioning, the central locking, uh, all the functions, and it all works. And it has physical controls. That is so nice to see, physical heating controls, because again, they're tactile, they're to hand, and they work. If I was to get one of these and do Bangonomics, then there are some cheap and easy upgrades you could do. There's a little shelf in the front here. 
under the radio, uh, which you could put an aftermarket big screen radio in with an adapter, and probably able to get very close to an Android Auto, Apple CarPlay type screen uh, with music and infotainment. In terms of storage space, another bit, it's a good storage space. There's certainly lots of pocket holes around here. Uh, and on another positive, you know, electric windows on this base spec, cup holder area. Um, good visibility is probably the other thing I'd also point out. I'm looking at these windows and yeah, it looks good in here. So, would I recommend this as a Bangonomic type car? Yeah, I probably would. You know, I, you always say the joke out of French cars, I've heard a lot of people have issues, but I think when you get into this territory, the key is not necessarily the brand of the car. I think the key is uh, making sure you get a car that's had good service history, it's been looked after, um, and then the reliability will fall out of that and this mileage, uh, be it French, German, Japanese, whatever it may be. Obviously, if you do want Japanese as the ultimate reliability, then you will pay the premium. But if you want something cheap and cheerful to get around to, then something like this Citroen C3 wouldn't hurt if that's all you wanted to do. Anyway, that's it from me. Short but sweet. Uh, and I'll hopefully catch you all again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Hello, YouTubers again. Just a little bit of an afterthought, having just come down a set of dual carriageway. I'm going to have to caveat my uh, review of the Citroen C3, unfortunately. Uh, you know what? I got up to 70, did 70, but by God was it noisy. Uh, I think my ears are still a little... It is certainly not a quiet car at speed. Uh, it might be the tyres, it might just be the road, but... I'm going to have to put this caveat on it, because having been in a friend's car the other day, there are certainly quieter... Uh, vehicles if you want to do a little bit of motorway speed. This is very good if you want to go around town you wouldn't notice it but if you do a bit of sort of dual carriageway motorway work then I suspect some of the alternatives like uh, the older Yaris's, my friend's got a Corsa, an older Corsa, Vauxhall Corsa and probably slightly better vents if you want to preserve your hearing. Uh, if not just turn the stereo up louder and smile and wave. Anyway, take care, speak to you later. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.